All right. Thanks for joining the session uh, regarding Drupal and OpenAI and the integration and see what we can do, uh, what we can add, what we can add to our application. First, I will introduce myself. My name is Vincenzo Gambino. I'm from London. I've been working with Drupal for 14 years now. I've been a speaker at several global events around Europe and the US. I'm also the author of the book Jumpstart and Jumpstart Development, where I explain how to build web application using uh, Gatsby as a content and Sandy as a backend. Uh, also, there is a uh, chapter regarding uh, Alexa and Sandy, and of course, uh, how to uh, integrate Gatsby and Drupal. Today, we're going to see what is OpenAI, what is ChatGPT. I'm going to go through the terminologies and just to we're, we're sure that we're all on the same page. Then I'm going to dive into two of the modules that I'm going to show you today, which is GPT Contactor System and OpenAI ChatGPT Integration. And we, see, we can see how we can extend the functionalities. Then we see what we can use, or how we can use our content that we have created with these modules. And there will be a demo and the Q&A. So OpenAI is a research laboratory that uh, develops and maintains a safe artificial uh, generated intelligence. And they created their own generative AI, where we can generate text, images, video, and audio. So, eight months have been passed since ChatGPT has been released. So now there is an application, there is a, a, a UI where the user can ask questions through the artificial intelligence. Everyone start loving it, they start playing with it, asking questions, generating content, and everyone loved it. So the company did. So companies saw the potentials. They start investing in the AI, they start building the tools, their products, and this brought up some privacy concern. So what those companies are doing with our, with our data? So what are they using to retrain their artificial intelligence so this data will be available to someone else? So this question uh, brought, for example, Italy to block ChatGPT for a while until all the answers were, all those questions were answered. And then uh, recently the European Parliament came out with the AI, with the AI Act that basically um, basically regulates the artificial intelligence research by risks. Then um, the AI needs supervision because the AI at the moment still makes mistakes that we call hallucination. So the AI needs human supervision. So we use it to boost up our productivity, to generate content, to write email and slides and so on. So it's setting us on our daily task. So for example, I use it, I use it to, to write script, for example in JavaScript so I can concentrate on the more complicated part of the application. So it's saving my energy on smaller tasks, so I can use, use it for bigger tasks. And we use, with OpenAI, we have these models. So we have Dolly, which we all know to generate and edit images. Then we have Whispers, or TTS. Whispers basically transform the, text, the speech to text, and TTS is text to speech. The embeddings is a set of models that convert text into numerical forms. So basically, the embeddings take, take the, sem takes the semantic meaning of the word of the sentence and transform it into numbers because the machine doesn't understand our language, it understands numbers, so it's done in that way. Then we have the moderation, that is a model that can detect if a text is sensitive or state. And then we have the GPT models that we all know. So, GPT is generally a train transformer. That has been pre trained, is not training in the data that we are allowing at the moment, <coughs> and is designed to generate human like text language in a, in a conventional settings. From what is used for? So, we use it for chatbot and virtual assistants, we use it to generate and translate content, to generate dynamic story techniques in games, and for personalized recommendation based on user preferences. How we can interact with GPT? We can interact all through the application or through the API from this URL. So the API concept uh, basically are the prompts, which is essentially is the command that you are passing to GPT, so that the question or what you need from, him, from it. Then we have the tokens, which is a unit of text that we're going to see later, because again, the machine doesn't understand our language but understands numbers. So it's a numerical representation of our words. And then we have the models that we saw before, which are an endpoint, for example. When we want to go to the endpoint, we need to we need the model, so which model we're going to use, we need the prompt. 
than the max token. So I mean, it always need to, uh, needs to should contain between the question and the answer. And then the temperature, which is basically determine how predictable will be the answer from the from the from the beginning. So if, the, if it's zero, it's more predictable. So the sky, or for example, the the what color is the orange? The orange is color of orange with a temperature of two. With a temperature well, temper of zero, sorry. With a temperature of two, for example, if you ask what color is the orange, you can say I don't know the, the, the national team, the uh, football team jersey from the Netherlands, for example, would be the color. This is an example poll. So we have the we need to pass the utilization. So this will be our open AI key. Then we need the model, in this case using the Vinci, then the prompt, say it is a test, then the mass token, and then the temperature. And see the response. I got the, some data, so the key, the object, one has been created, uh, which model has been used. So what models we have available at moment in the Google as we're going to see today. So you can see the open AI Integration, which is a base, base module where you can add your configuration with OpenAI, so your ID and your organization ID. And after that, there is a suite of modules And we add the API key and the organization ID. And now we are all set. We can, we can start installing these other modules. The first one will be the Skater module, again, as usual, Rush here. And then we can start configuring. We can start the configuration. So we go into our basic uh, HTML text format and we make it under the content type info. And in the page we have the open AI tools, so we enable it, we decide which model it's going to use, the temperature and the max token between the request and the response. Now we have it available here in our CD editor. So when we click the top of the menu, we can see text condition. Sorry. Text completion, adjust on voice, summarize, translate. In a here, I can change the tone, whatever I for you. We can summarize this text, we can summarize it. And translation is not related to any language that you installed in Tuba. You can translate it to any language. So you can write in this case Dutch, even if it's not installed in Drupal, and you will translate the content in Dutch. Then we have the other model, which is the OpenAI Computer Tools. And basically this adds a new functionality on the right-hand side of the node form. <coughs> Same with Summarize, Content Other, and Taxonomy. When you, for example, you want to suggest, or have some suggestion for Taxonomy, you choose the body field, and then you can suggest taxonomy. At the moment, uh, this is just returning some keywords from the text. It's not related to any of your vocabulary that you have in Drupal. But what you can do, you can extend this functionality, and you can pass an array or a set of keywords from your terms, and ask them to find the most relevant, relevant from this from the list. So you can have your own terms uh, here. To extend it, you need to the uh, OpenAI is using the OpenAI HP client package, which is good because it's maintained by the community, so it's more secure, uh, better performances, and uh, more maintained. So we have the client, uh, the OpenAI class, the client method, and the completion, and create. Again, we pass the module, the model, and the prompt. And then it returns again the result, choices, the array, and then the text, which is the answer. So an example. Uh, CK model. So we have again the client, completion, and create. In this case, we pass the model, the model that comes from the configuration we add in the CK editor. The prompt is coming from the what we saw in the form, and temperature and mass token comes again from the settings that we have. We put them into the array, then again choice, first add in the array, and then the text will be will contain the response. The other module is ChatGPT Contents Assistant, where this can translate, uh, create content, translate, and create images. This is a lightweight, so it, can, it does just those three functions, um, those three, three features. So when you uh, install it, uh, again, that's usual. 
you have the configuration, so you can again add the model, the endpoint you want to use, the endpoint, your API access token, and then again max token, temperature, and which content types you want this feature. So when you go and create a content, you have this feed from this link here, so you click on the link, it opens a prompt, again family history trooper, within then the, the pop-up. Here, you will uh, paste the test, and then if you want, you can use uh, this content. And it will paste automatically the body field of the form. The translation for this is, this is related to your language that you have installed in Google this time. So if you cannot translate to any other language, just the one that you have in Google. And when you click this button, this link here, we will translate the title and the body field automatically. <coughs> And you can, of course, extend it and uh, translate more text fields, uh, other paragraphs, whatever you have in that content. To extend it is not using uh, the client, uh, the, the, the other client like OpenAI, it's using its own classes. And again, we've got the GPT method uh, here, uh, GPT response, pass the prompt, and we get the response. So now we saw the modules where we can create content. We can suggest taxonomy, summarize, and translate it. And uh, now we're going to see what we can do with this, with this content we have created. So we can, for example, improve our search, <coughs> search experience. We're going to create a chat like search experience with, the, uh, with a prompt where we can search with our own content. We can train GPT with our data. But we're not doing fine tuning because it's more expensive. We're going to use embeddings and wrap. So, Let's go quickly to the RAG. So the RAG is development generation and basically combines the strength of pre-trained language models with information retrieval system. What does that mean? So the information retrieval system is the vector database because the embeddings is getting the semantic meaning of the word in form of numbers or coordinates and store it in a vector database. And then we will use the pre-trained language model <coughs> to generate a better response. So we got the data, and we're going to manipulate this data, and it's going to present a better, uh, better answer. A betting, as I say, is a list of vectors, plot important numbers, basically are the impact of the SSA in the vector database. And basically, it shows um, how related the two words are based on their distance with this coordinate. And uh, again, because the system does not understand our language, understand uh, numbers. So we use it for search, recommendation, or classification. This is an example. So we have, for example, the word cat, and uh, then we go to the embeddings, and the coordinates are two and three. Then we have the dog, the word dog, which is the coordinates are two and four. And then, for example, we have car, and the coordinates are seven and one. As you can see, those are related, because those two, are, again, are animals, are mammals, or bones, tails, or pets, whatever. So those are more related, so they are close, if I'm asking for a friend. So we'll come back with those two, of course. If I'm asking for a transportation system, then we we'll come back from with this one. And they use this demo Python. With Python, in fact, you can create your own vector database, you're going to give you the API, and you can configure it again in the Drupal. We're going to see how. So we need to do two modules, so we need the search API AI. And then also we can use search API attachment if you want to use, if you want to store PDF as well in, uh, in, in the vector database. So install it as usual. Then we go into search API attachment configuration form. We define the structure. Then we go to our embeddings from the OpenAI modules. We define the model to use. In this case, I'm using Ada. And then here I can select the Python uh, plugin we have. And the back of here, and uh, my uh, my case, the API index will look like that. So we have uh, the server in Python, and I'll show you later in the demo. And we have the attachment, and then we have again the attachment here, and the body field here. So now we're going to store our body field title and other things into the vector database. The same configuration we're going to see later, and now we are ready to go. So we can add, I can ask a question, I can retrieve PDF, and also part of the and also the, the content that contains this PDF, for example. 
So say that the tokens is a piece of text that we're taking to number. Uh, so what does it mean? Basically, it means this. So these are points from James Joyce, and then you can see. And we have some. Uh, an average token is a is a. And here you can see. The so this has been passed out to tokens. And then when it's passed to the LLM, we be converting in token IDs, which will receive these. So those are tokens. Tokens are important in this case because, first of all, OpenAI charges a token. So we have, for example, that business tokens for $10, whatever, depending on the, of the engine that you are using. And also because, uh, depending on what, what model you are using, you have a limitation on the, on the, on the request response on the total number of tokens. For example, you can have 4,000 tokens that you can use between the request and the response. So for example, if you, wanna, uh, if you want to index a book, for example, the Gamma Pages book, which is more than, uh, we said it's 4,000 tokens, of course it's 16,000 characters, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to chunk it, you're going to chunk it in this way. So we have a really brilliant long text, which is more than 4,000 tokens. So we use the text meter. And then we can send more requests. So this is good as well because it's going to separate the text for better indexing and better graphics and better understanding of the text as well. So apart from saying, um, apart from the, uh, the not in, in token uh, limit, we chunk it. We get the embeddings for the chunk, for each chunks. So we have the coordinates and we store it in the vector database. Then some user here is asking a question, making a research in our system. So we get the embeddings of the words again, so we know the semantic meaning of this question. We do the vector search, so we see based on these coordinates, which are the process. Uh, we come it back with the results here. Then we pass the results to the LLM, and the LLM will produce a better answer. And now it's that time. Happy? <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is my application. There is no internet. Okay, so oh, this is fine, by the way. Just I need to refresh now to see if there is internet. So this is the vector database. So as you see, I stored my content here. So this is the content, for example, the node, uh, node 21. And uh, I got the content, so the text, the volume, and uh, the entity node with the uh, internal URI, and the server ID. And then those are all the values. So this is the, the embeddings, the, the number coordinates that gave. So when we're, when we're doing a search, we see this, and then we'll come back with this text, and the, the system will we'll process it then. You see? Okay. It was working before. Okay. All right. All right, so. Uh, for example, we want to ask some questions here. Uh, search, and now what is happening is getting the embeddings of the, and then we produce the answer. Then, as well, we have the, the link to the here, to the node. So then we are going to demo the search, sorry, the uh, CK editor functionality. There, then at the end, I can search down. And it's regenerating the text again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
from here I'm also summarize it and translate it, we're gonna see it in a bit. I will finish this one because I can summarize it here, for example. I can click and from the body field it will summarize it. So it's getting now the body and create a summary. So I can copy and paste it in, in my summary, for example. I can also adjust the content zone. I can analyze the text if it's basically writing any policy. It's fine, we're gonna make an example as well. I can suggest content title, so based on the body field. And again, I can suggest taxonomy. And at the moment, these are not related to your vocabulary, just, just getting keywords. And from here, let me select it, I can translate it. Then when we want to use the search API. So the search API attachment, here is where we define the PDF extractor. We want to index also PDF and then the PDF library that we're gonna use in our server. And then we also need to configure the embeddings. So we have the content, which I selected so is article, the model I want to use, and then the vector plugin is, uh, um, is Pinecon. Here I've got my uh, Pinecon API. And then we are ready to go for the index. So we go into search API. Here I've got my server, Pinecon. So it's enabled, it's the backend is Pinecon, it's coming from the embeddings. And I need to, I need to choose the, the backend, uh, the namespace. It's from a previous talk. And then we got the index here, where I have content and files. And the server is icon, the one that created in search API. And then in the fields, I have the I have the search API, the, the attachment here, and also the body field here. And as a type, I need to decide embeddings. Because you can say the same Boolean, full text, integer, but in this case, I'm using embeddings. And then, of course, you can see here we have the content that has been, that has been indexed into the Python server. So here we are, are all my content here with their embeddings, so their value, their basically their coordinates in the database, the vector database, the content. So this part will come back to the LM, it will generate the answer and provide it to the user. Then we have uh, something for testing. So we have the ChatGPT Explorer. So this uh, helps you to develop something even for prompts. So here you can set the module, the temporal, the max token. And here it's setting the profile. Uh, so it will be added to the prompt. So who you are when you're asking the question. So in this case, for example, if I ask um, uh, how to create a controller, without giving any context. Now we generate the response here. Without any context, uh, he knows that I'm in Drupal because here, it, for example, let me just refresh. Okay, so I can go here, and I can say I am a lab developer, for example. Let's say, how can I create a controller? Now the context will be the Laravel developer. So click submit, and it's telling me how to create it in Laravel. So in this case, you can play with it if you want to develop some features and you want to set a profile or just a basic instruction. 
pull one. You see it? So, which is this one? So, where we can generate images with OV. So, we generate with say, these sides. And I like to generate images about Terminator of the thunderstorm, about the uh, OpenAI. So, I already done something this morning, but we can do more now. So, this is Terminator in Amsterdam for. Uh, copyright reason is going to put Terminator, but it's done sit down. This is with tulips, and this is when it, uh, this is uh, uh, for the one who knows, I asked for the root Google it, which is a player, Dutch player, uh, coding in Drupal, and it produced this image. So, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, then we can produce some other image. Oh, sorry. Here. Uh, yeah. Uh, what can we do? Drupal Jet. Terminator and Drupal Jet. Capital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's the Lee HD, and uh, I can choose between uh, the URL, so it's going to paste me a link the image, or I can get the, the B64 uh, JSON, so I can just store it directly in my MTAS file in my system. So I can submit it from URL, and now it's generating the image. Let's see what's coming out. Okay. Drupal, we saw how we can connect Drupal through the API, how we can extend the most the current functionalities, and also we we saw how to train the LLM with our own data using RAC. This is useful, for example, if you have a, I don't know, a system service or like for um, uh, lots of documents, you can store it uh, using the RAC system. And uh, then, last thing, uh, in October, 24 October, there will be the first Drupal uh, Future Intelligence Camp in London. Uh, I'm, I'm a one of the co organizer. I will be there as well, so I'm waiting for you there as well. Those are the resources. So we have the Wikipedia and Content Assistant, the OpenAI module, the OpenAI the open documentation, uh, the examples, and the chat All right. Yeah. This morning I saw something with the voice commands. Is yes. that also something, a module or? Uh, yes, we are module, let me see. So those are the module, we go to the OpenAI. Text to switch. I think I'll it to set to switch endpoint. I haven't played with this yet, so we can, we can see it now. Is speech to text okay? So this is audio. Uh, so it's not there as well. So it's, uh, I haven't used that functionality yet. We can ask Frederick for yeah, that. Yeah. Is Frederick here? I was just curious. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But, yes. Um, you showed in the demo how to use. Yep. Um, how well does this work using paragraphs? Uh, it, it's a GPI as well, so use the GPI. So but what happens basically, you create uh, your index as usual. So you go to the separate file count, then you go to the index. And in the fields, you can add the other fields. So for example here, I can add, for example, the title. So content attachment, or body. Comments and language and title. And uh, if I add other fields, as all the other search API index, you can add it there and then select the embeddings as well. So if you add any field, and you select here embeddings and it will start storing the title as well. Okay, so basically, when you have uh, like field content and it can have multiple types of paragraphs. Yeah. Then normally you would use in the search index, you use the field content and you put that in the index. Yeah. Uh, and not all separate fields like with uh, um, uh, a Q&A uh, paragraph type or mm -hmm. uh, some other type. 
then it would recognize that uh, within the field content and it can uh, it consists of multiple paragraph types and it will be able to go through the content or it needs to add the, the fields from the paragraph types itself. Most likely it fits for the paragraph itself, so in the same way where you add a field here, where you can expand, then here you have like more fields from the URI for example, and it will be the same as the paragraph then, and it will be related to the content. Yeah, you can actually choose uh, uh, younger content, so you actually yeah, give the whole content uh, this an option in there, I think, uh, an answer to this option. Maybe not in the demo, but okay. you have an option to, to, to uh, choose for such a computer editor. Uh, okay, okay, so fine one, because when we store the, the content, in this case, we have content, but uh, depending on the title, I will have the title as well, object, um, the object title here as well. So I'm not sure how that is going to work in the HTML. I haven't tried yet. Yeah. 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 Yes? I was wondering if you, uh, you showed how to generate content with uh, GTV. Yep. Is it also possible to include references to the original sources of information? <laughs> what can you include? possible to include source uh, references to the original sources? Uh, not at the moment. Otherwise no. you're just repeating what's stated elsewhere. Um, We're just creating a lot of noise. No, no, I don't think. I think it's something you can develop then and recognize it. Any other question? Anything else you want to see? Yes? Yeah, it's the structure of Yes. It's sufficient to develop, for example, to show profiles. Uh, in our website, we have many portals where mm -hmm. you can use students, the researchers, and anything. Is it already possible to provide, uh, depending on the position of the website, uh, the type of profile? Because it's expecting a certain uh, user. It's, it's still too early. Do uh, uh, you have different indexes? Or is this an index? And then you can find by searching the different possible mm, So in the blog, so when you when you add the search, you're talking about the search, right? Yeah. So in the blog here, and you have the search API chat form in the configuration. So uh, you have your index. Uh, if you want, you can use a view as well if you're using view. And uh, Based on this, I think you can then extend it and uh, do the proper thing. So, so you can see how they do it, and then you can extend it and add more functionalities. Because at the moment we are still like on the early stage, so it, uh, anyone can extend it and do all can, can contribute. Anything else? Right. Thank you.